Good evening, Robert Scribbler. It is October 9th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk a bit about Michael, which is now a major hurricane containing maximum sustained winds of 120 miles per hour at this time and is moving off toward the north, toward the Florida Panhandle at about 12 miles per hour. Michael is expected to make landfall within less than 24 hours near the Florida Panhandle and then track to the north through much of the U.S. Southeast Coast before exiting somewhere off the Outer Banks or Norfolk. Along its path, Michael is expected to bring severe storm surge flooding in the range of 6 to 13 feet along parts of the Gulf Coast and very heavy rainfall ranging from five to 10 inches along a huge swath stretching from Florida through Georgia, large sections of the Carolinas recently impacted by Florence and on into Virginia. According to the National Hurricane Center, Michael is expected to continue to strengthen or has the potential to continue to strengthen prior to landfall. At present, the minimum central pressure is 957 millibars, and we do have some models that show a storm in the range of the 940 millibar range just prior to landfall, which would be even a more intense storm. National Hurricane Center guidance at present is predicting a landfalling storm in the, with maximum sustained winds in the range of 125 to 130 miles per hour. Looking at the expected rainfall swath, I just, I just wanna focus in on this a little bit more because large regions of North Carolina and South Carolina were inundated by Florence and these regions are now predicted to see rainfall totals in the range of four to 10 inches on top of already saturated grounds in some regions which still have not completely recovered from flooding. It's also worth noting that large sections of the projected swath of Michael have also received heavier than normal rainfall for this time of year. So flooding is a serious concern. However, one of the, the I guess, mitigating factors for Michael is that the storm is not expected to stall over land, although it is expected to maintain a significant intensity over land. I was recently looking at the GFS model as provided by Tropical Tidbits, and let's see if we can get this to load here. And let's see. Okay, so I just want to see if we can get uh, multiple hours. So what I want to show you is the predicted intensity for Florence, I'm sorry, for Michael Overland. So just prior to landfall, the present GFS model run showing a 948 millibar storm, which is a, a major hurricane, at, as I said before, between 125 and 130 mile per hour maximum sustained winds in the National Hurricane Center forecast. But notice that as the storm gets over land, it doesn't really weaken that much, getting down into the 974 millibar range, which is still strong tropical storm to, to minor hurricane strength and maintaining in the 980 millibars as it moves over Georgia and into the Carolinas. So a storm maintaining intensity and getting tangled up with a, a frontal system and a trough dipping down through the east, which is expected to generate intense rainfall over a large swath. And I just wanna show you a, another projection of predicted rainfall associated with Michael across the US East and Southeast with, with very heavy rains running from the Florida Panhandle all the way through Virginia as Michael tracks off toward the North and East over the coming days. 
I've talked a lot about climate change related influences on hurricanes this year. And according to a number of scientists, including Dr. Michael Mann, the fingerprint prints of human caused climate change are on the extreme events that we are seeing now. And we have more and more in the way of attribution studies that are showing that various aspects of hurricane intensity are being increased, being amplified by effects related to human caused climate change. One of the primary effects related to human caused climate change is warming sea surfaces. And at present, Michael is tracking over a portion of the Gulf of Mexico that is around 1.3 degrees Celsius above normal. And it will be running into parts of the Gulf of Mexico that are about 2.4 degrees Celsius above normal. These are much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures that provide a lot of extra fuel for hurricanes and are certainly aiding in the intensification of Michael. Human forced climate change is warming sea surface temperatures around the world, and this is having an impact by providing more fuel for hurricanes. And in particular, around the US this year, sea surfaces have been very warm. In the air as well, we note a very high atmospheric moisture loading with very high precipitable moisture levels along the path of Michael. And these high moisture levels are one of the reasons why Michael will tend to lose strength less over land. There's also a, a contributing flow of moisture coming in from the Atlantic, very strong flood of moisture. And this will not only contribute to Michael's prolonged intensity over land, but it will also help to spike those predicted high rainfall totals. Now, in relation to human-caused climate change, rising atmospheric moisture levels is another indicator. And for each degree Celsius of global warming, the global atmosphere ends up increasing its water vapor content by about 7%, which contributes to increasingly intense rainfall events, particularly in the most intense rainstorms where these higher moisture levels have a, an outsized effect. So we have a major hurricane now tracking toward the Gulf Coast, a hurricane that has been amplified in a number of respects due to human caused climate change. And I seriously hope that everyone along the path of this developing storm pays attention to the statements from the National Hurricane Center and gets out of way of harm if they are called to evacuate. Please stay safe and thank you for joining me. I'll be chatting with you soon.